Hi, this is Toby Salgado. I'm here to help you answer a question that we all have. How can I build my business faster and better? Each week, I interview top producing real estate agents, coaches, and authors. I find out, I dig in, I find out how they did it, where they struggled, and how they overcame the obstacles that in, inevitably gets in front of all of us. And I did that so both you and I, so we all can reach our own full potential. If you want more of the tips and strategies we cover in this session, you're gonna to wanna to do two things. First, go to our site, superagentslive.com, and subscribe to the show on iTunes so that you don't miss any of the conversations we have in the future. And second, download my free ebook and learn how to stack the deck in your favor. Before we get going, let's hear from our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm, but how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white labeled. Now, I called Prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients, and I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. Hey, one other quick thing before we get to it. I just cut a deal with Bob Corcoran's organization. Any of you that want to get a free coaching call, you can. You know, Bob loves what we're doing for aspiring super agents, and he wanted to lend a hand. If you want to get your free coaching call, send an email to Bubba, just like it sounds, B-U-B-B-A, Bubba, at CorcoranCoaching.com, and let him know you listen to the show. Let's get to it. Today's episode is with Teresa Cowart, and uh, you know, I kind of really, this is kind of a, not all episodes are created equal, right? Some are better than others, some you might resonate with, and others you don't. Uh, today, I, I, this episode, man, I dig in, and I try to figure out sort of new, I'm, I'm kind of digging into like new sort of niches uh, for you guys to go and uh, go try to find deals. So uh, stick with it, hopefully you like it, and again, I don't know that this one is for everybody, so, welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. So I want to do something that uh, I haven't done for a while and I need to keep this up um, and it is iTunes reviews. Man, any review you guys give the show, either on iTunes or Stitcher, it helps us so, so much. And, and when people take the time out and give me a review, you know, look, I want to reach out and, and let them know that I appreciate it. So Joe Agent says, simply awesome. Derek777 says he's a super agent's live addict. He says, I, I get withdrawals when I'm away from it. NC at home set. Amazingly great. Jay Nat. Everybody's saying it's amazing. <laughs> uh, Jay Nat says he's hooked. Um, Heidi, 064, inspirational show. Thank you, Heidi. Super Hooper. I know that dude. Unbelievable. Uh, uh, Steve, 6824. He just says, dude. And, and the first thing he says... How does he not charge for this content? It's amazing. Uh, TRS 2001, my f new favorite podcast. Uh, LG Chicago, pure killer. Ladmo, inspirational again. That's cool. Uh, Michael, HFTGU, great show. Uh, R. Peterson, 44, uh, loves it. Oakley, 182, great show for anyone or looking for inspiration. Mark, DS11, podcast is gold. PH Natasha just says thank you. You're welcome, Natasha. Uh, Newport Sandy, must listen. Um, uh, Jamie Kaiser, best in the business. Great value in every show. Uh, 
D O F Bing, Doff Bing, Best on Real Estate Mentor Show. That's right. Uh, Fast Court 94. Uh, he enjoys it. Gene D'Angelo, great. Uh, everybody kills it. It's next level information. Britt V, quality. Carlos Realty. Uh, Auburn preferred Alex. Thanks. Buy and sell with Marcus at Southern AZ. Jesse, I know that dude. He's all over Twitter. Mo sells. I know Mo. Okay. <clears throat> Listen, real quick. Here is the deal. I want to I, I want to ask you guys something. Hopefully you can help me out. The name of this show is Super Agents Live, right? We have this great podcast. We have a great site. I can't change it. But I do think I do think there's a lot of people who see the show on iTunes and and they sort of dismiss it. I mean, a lot of people told me that they're like, hey, I saw your show. And uh, and it took me a while, but I finally downloaded it. And and, and it's great. And I think the reason for that is, is I just have Super Agents Live, and then the tagline is Meet Your Mentor. Not everybody knows that this show is about real estate. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep up this feed, right? We're at episode 107 today, um, but I'm going to start a new feed. So basically, I'm going to start a new podcast, but I'm going to reuse all, you know, all the interviews that I've already done, <clears throat> So I need some help with names. Like if you if somebody out there, I know there is somebody out there that is just fantastic with names. I would really, really love if you could help me out and say, listen, you know, blah, blah, blah. but I do think in the name, it should say real estate agent. So, um, so, you know, I was thinking about real estate agents, tagline, make more money or, you know, uh, real estate agent millionaires speak, or I, I don't know. I'm not that great with names. Unfortunately, my wife is, but she always comes up with like kitschy ones. And anyhow. Okay. Help me out. Uh, I don't know what I'll do, uh, but I'll do something for you. If, if, uh, if you can, um, if you can come up with a name that, that works. All right. Hey, let's get to the show. Hey, Teresa, thanks for taking the time out today. Thank you for inviting me. No problems. Hey, look, so I've given the audience a brief overview of your background, but maybe take a minute. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and your business. Okay. Well, I have been a realtor for about a decade now. I was in human resources with Hershey Chocolate before I came into this world. And um, I have worked really hard, built a good team, and now am the co-owner of our Remax office here locally. So you came from HR at a big company, a big you know Fortune fifty company. Like I, I was, I'm assuming they're Fortune fifty, right? They're, I mean, certain Fortune one hundred. Um, and to real estate, how did how, like what? How did that happen for you? Well, my story is a little crazy and kind of um, intuitive of how I have lived my life by the seat of my pants. But um, our plant here locally was. Um, being downsized, basically shut down, bought out by another company, and I was not comfortable with the new company. Um, I was driving on a retail therapy session, and I happened to see a sign on a billboard that said, real estate class starting tomorrow. And I turned my car around, and I pulled in, and I said, um, sign me up. This is what I want to do. So that's how I got into real estate. Um, so a retail therapy session. So you went shopping. You were basically yeah. <laughs> you're feeling yeah. feeling bad about yourself. So you went shopping. <laughs> but look, so I mean, so the 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 um, the new company you didn't like. Uh, so you weren't going to work there. Um, right. You, you, I mean, did real estate speak to you, or was it just an, an opportunity? You saw, hey, I can. I, this is a job opportunity. You know what? I just always thought that I wanted to do something in real estate in the back of my head. Huh. And in human resources, we were always helping people relocate to the area. So I was always calling realtors saying, I've got this person, they're coming for an interview. What can you do to help me? Can you drive them around for a couple hours? You know, that kind of thing. So I was always kind of telling people how wonderful it was to live in this area anyway. And, you know, I did have the, have an opportunity to, to move to another area with the company, and I just wasn't interested in doing that. At the time, my kids were fairly young. Is that better? So. Got it. By the way, Much better. real quick, okay. Um, okay. and we're still recording. All right. Do, are you, I, it sounds so, like you're on a cell phone. Do you have a landline available? Here's something I want to talk about. Is, I do. So you are in a, this yeah. is an interesting yeah, yeah. So I'll, strategy I'll, I'll here that, uh, that so. with some of my corporate or, or coaching students, um, we're playing with this. So you are in HR, and when you are doing a new hire, you would reach out to agents 
and 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 do what? And so, look, here's here's what I want to get at, Teresa. Is this a viable, uh, you know, lead gen channel? Should people in the audience, if you know, if they have some big companies uh, in their city, right? I'm in San Diego, so we have Intuit. I mean, we have giant Qualcomm. You know, should they right. be reaching out into the HR group at those companies and saying, "Listen, I want to be your preferred agent." Yeah, I absolutely think that they should. And in this area, there are a lot of agents that do do that because we have some huge industry around here. And um, there are a lot of – I'm on the preferred list for several large companies in the area. And when new companies come in, um, of course, you know, the really good agents are scrambling to try to get on that preferred list. Amazing, man. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think I, – I mean, I, you know – I, I, well, why has this never come up on the show? You know, we talk about farming, we talk about working your sphere, we talk about all that stuff. But you know, these this, and we've also talked about you know certain people work will work with like probate attorneys. But in terms of working with HR, um, is is this something that that everybody knows that, that just doesn't do it, or is this sort of a secret? I don't know if it's a secret or not, but it makes perfect sense if you hear that ABC company is coming to your area and they're going to hire three hundred people then that's 300 people that need somewhere to live. Yeah. So you should definitely try to go out and develop a relationship with those HR people. Or I mean, sometimes they use relocation companies, um, you know, which some of the companies here use those as well. And you just, you know, put yourself in a position where you are on that list and make friends with the HR people. We do little things that don't cost a lot of money, you know, dropping off cookies. Right. The HR people just sending them an email every once in a while, just reminding them, "Hey, we're out here," um, because those people are the first folks that any applicant or new employee meet. Right. So, yeah. So, so how does it? I mean, talk. I mean, can you give us a script or like you know how? Like, if, if I'm gonna, if I, I'm gonna, I work at Hershey's or I, I work at Qualcomm, you're gonna call me. What? How does that? How does that go? Well, I mean, basically, I, I know a lot of the people, number one, because I was in the industry, but yeah. I'm going to just call them and say, hey, I, I noticed, I read in the paper, sometimes I send them a clipping of the newspaper article and just say, I read in the paper that you guys are hiring, you know, 300 people. I would love to be part of that team, that relocation team. I will do anything I can to help you. Um, if you've got somebody you really want to impress, I am happy to put them in my car and drive them around for 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, however long you think it's going to take to just kind of show them the area and try to sell them on moving to the area. Because, you know, a lot of times from an HR background, a lot of times the applicant is not really the person that you have to sell. So you have to find out, is is his wife coming with him or his kids coming with him? Uh-huh. You know, because you're going to sell it a little differently. Um Right. Depending on who's coming with him. And I have actually been on the phone and, and called the wife that was, you know, back home in Minnesota or wherever and said, hey, I understand your husband's coming. I spent some time with him today. We rode around this neighborhood, that neighborhood. I would love to send you a relocation packet about our area because I understand you weren't with him. And so you didn't get to see the things that he saw. Because it, if, especially a couple, you, there's two people as part of that team. And you've got to sell them both. She may not want to leave where she lives. Interesting. That's a benefit to the HR manager. Got it. Okay, that's cool. Um, so, um, so how hard is it to get on the list? If, can I just call up and say, you know, call into Hershey's? Uh-huh. And well, look. So, is there in, in like if I if, again if I think of a Qualcomm, HR is not one person. HR is a, a giant group. So, the part, yeah. yeah. So, what is is there? A, is it like a relocation? Per, like what? What is that title? Who you is have it? to find out. Every company's different. Got you it. have to find out how they do it. Um, we have a large company here that has their own little reload department and you, it's really not HR, it's the reload department, but it takes a little bit of time to figure out how each company works. Cause they all work a little different. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in my situation, um, you know, we were a large plant, but we, HR was just a few people. So, um, it was easier to probably get to me than it would be to get to somebody at say Gulfstream here. I mean, that, that just takes a lot more time and it, sometimes it doesn't happen overnight, but it's, it's beneficial to you if you just hang in there and stay with it. Yeah. I mean, look, I mean, that's, that's with everything, right? I mean, that's, that's life, you know, just, you know, take action and stick to it and stick, you know, create a plan and stick to it. So, so, um, 
what else is there? So I, I, I want to stay on this for just a, a couple more minutes and then move on. So mm-hmm. you, I can find you the relocation person at in the in the group. Is there um, OK, that Gulfstream, maybe people come in, they're new hires, but they don't like just move start and buy a house you know maybe they're do, do, what about temporary housing like is that another like bucket that maybe if you're an agent you can go fish in right well and and we don't typically in my market make a whole lot of money off off stuff like that but it but if you stay in touch with those people that you put in that temporary housing or that you put in that apartment for a year you know you, you gave them the little drive around they decided they're not comfortable buying yet they're just going to rent for a while. Okay, well, I still have met them, been in front of them, have a relationship with them. Now I know where they're living, so I'm going to stay in touch with them. And I'm whenever they're ready to buy, they're going to buy from me right. because I spent all that time for them. And that's just an investment that you're making. Yeah, and I, what I was more talking about, Teresa, was, was oh. uh, so – uh, again, I'll say Qualcomm here, right? They have corporate housing, right? Or they are like mm-hmm. corporate apartments kind of a thing. Like, you know, hey, come in. We'll put you up in this apartment for three months while you get your, your, your you, you know, get your feet on the ground. Um, and I'm, I was just thinking the people who manage those, right? So you can fill a position with the HR person, but the people right. who manage that corporate housing is is pretty in tune with what their residents are doing. I just, I was, again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so. We don't have a lot of that in this area, um, there's a lot of um, uh, apartment complexes, and I hate to keep using Gulfstream as a reference, but up around that area where that is, and they will rent like on a three-month basis, and then um, right. the company supplements or however they do it yeah. to make that financially make them financially solvent on that. But um, it's that's a little bit more difficult in our area, um, just because of the way that it works. But we do have people all the time that. You know, will call us and say, "I'm moving here. You know, I'm getting a job at Gulfstream, and I um, I need temporary. I need a rental, or I need this, or I need that." And you know, those are the times where you just come to stop and say, "Well, why are you why are you renting?" And and I manage rentals, so I have no problem with rentals. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I I want to be able to understand what their motivation is. Got it. And then and so uh, um. How is, is there – so what – how does your mar- – you know, right, okay. So people are going to be moving to your city f- to work at these at these companies. Is, is there a way that you market your, your – you know, do marketing to kind of reach those people prior to even, you know, talking with the HR group at that company? Oh, sure we do. I mean, if we know a certain area where, the, where they're recruiting from heavily, yeah. we actually start marketing that area. The other thing that we have that's really unique for us – is that we are positioned between two military bases, about the same distance between both of them. And where my office is, we have a great school system in low taxes, so we're we're where they want to live. So we actually even go out to those bases and start marketing at those bases. You know that we're you know when you come to when you come to Savannah, when you come to Richmond Hill, you know you need to call us because we'll help you. We're you know military specialists. Blah blah blah. So it, it is how you market, and you do need to find out where the people are coming from, um, and that just takes research. Okay, yeah, okay. So I look, we're landing on some good stuff here. So, so t- talk to me about. Look, so I'm in San Diego, and we have we are. I mean, we are crazy with bases, right? We have Camp Pendleton, which is giant. We have we have like all of them here, right? We have the Army, right. the Navy, the Marines. Um, um, so we have three bases here. How would, if somebody's in San Diego, <clears throat> again, what does that look like? How do I go into those bases? I know, and look, you can get, it's amazing. I did this recently for a different company that I was starting. I, you can literally just w- drive up to the base, fill out some paperwork, and drive in. You just have, you have to tell them, mm-hmm. like, why you want to get in. But so right. once I get in, like, what would I do? How, give us people some guidance on how you do that at those bases. Well, well, there are there are buildings that are just about in processing. So when you go there, you can get on the list. You can advertise in their their welcome packet. Um, we just started advertising on a map that is only given out to incoming soldiers um, of the the uh, base. Um, so it's not even a public document, but it's given out to the soldiers who are, when they're coming in. They have a newcomer's guide for when they come in. We we 
we advertise in there. Um, we also advertise on some of the military websites. So, right. um, you know, we're very conscious that those folks usually, when they're coming in town, they also typically have already either sold their other home or have rented their other home, and they can. I mean, again, they have to have somewhere to live. Right. They're not a move-up client or a move-over client or a downsize client. They're a client that needs a home right now. And you know what, too? I was, I was just thinking about um, – so when I uh, – the, the last company I started was called Task Hero. I won't get into it, but we, we focused on the, you know veterans and active duty people. And we could even – like we could pay a camp penalty. We could pay them 50 bucks and uh and go set up uh go set up a a, a table 50 bucks set up a table we could put it right outside the px and uh and i remember the people were talking about it they said hey you know do it on friday because everybody's cashing their check and like everybody's gonna walk by your you know your booth have you ever ever tried that we have and we actually um just signed up for a back to school fair Hmm. that they're having um uh, end of July, and it's the same thing, just like you said, 50 bucks, you get to come and, you know, put out all your paraphernalia and talk to, you know, thousands of people that are just wandering through. So, and I so, mean, capture, uh, capture, capture. Yeah, right, right. Uh, um, especially, you know, if, you, if you're positioning yourself as the military specialist people, mm-hmm. um, right. I, I, you know, look, how has that worked for you? I mean, how many deals have you got? I mean, I mean, is that something that is you know, valuable? Or is that somebody that, you know, you'd put sort of a low person on, on your team, right? The low person on the totem pole, uh, you know, to go man that desk or that table? Um, I know. I think it, I mean, I think it's extremely valuable because the, the, the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that even if you're not going to buy a house, you probably know somebody who is. Right. So yes. it's always about asking you know, well, I understand that, you know, your credit's not quite there yet. Can I can I put you with a lender, that a friend of mine that can help you maybe work on that over the next six months? And, and who else do you know? Do you know somebody who is looking to buy a house now or, or sell their house? Or, you know, so we're, you know, you have to ask those questions. They're not going to volunteer it typically. You have to right, ask them. Right. And, you know, it's funny what I learned, well, you know, unlike, uh, by the way, Teresa, it already, like you coming on this show is super valuable for my audience because number one, what we talked about uh, HR. We haven't talked about it on the show before. Number two, now we're talking about marketing to the military and how to do that. Um, what I was going to say before I, I went off on that little tangent was, you know, what I did learn is that unlike, again, HR, where you can develop a relationship and people can uh, say, hey, you know, go talk with my friend Teresa about real estate, like the mi- military can't do that. They cannot. Like they can't endorse anybody, which right. is kind of crappy. Right. Hey, but their wives can. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> there's lots of little. There's lots of places like on Facebook and and Twitter and, right. and even Instagram and stuff like that where the wives talk about stuff. I have a a military um, spouse now who I think she's like in Idaho or somewhere, but I sold her house several years ago, and she's still referring people to me. If she finds out somebody's moving to this area, she tells them, you have got to call Teresa Coward. So that is important. Those relationships, I'm a big, I'm a huge Facebook person anyway, and a lot of my clients are my personal friends as well as my page, and I know enough about this to be dangerous. But, um, I stay on there a lot, and and those those ladies. When I, I know when a when a lady comes on and asks me to be her friend, and she's a military spouse, immediately that somebody else has referred her to me, and she's just trying to find inf- information about me personally. You know what kind of person I am, and that's fine. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually going to look up your. So so what you said earlier, you said you know enough. You, you're a big Facebook person, and uh, um, and you know enough to be dangerous. What do you What do you mean? Well, I I just mean that everything that's always evolving and, you know, I consider myself pretty savvy, but I don't know everything there is to know about Facebook and how it works. I mean, I know there's Facebook ads, you know, the problem with being a realtor and I'm sure other realtors would agree is that we get so many conversations, so many phone calls, so many solicitations for this great thing and that great thing that sometimes it's just really hard to distinguish what is real and what's not, what what is a good value for your money, what you're going to get your return on your investment, um, and I have 
kind of partnered with some other really good agents in other markets. Uh, what I found about REMAX agents in particular, and I'm sure it's the same with other other companies as well, is as long as you're not in my market, I'll tell you anything you want to know. Right. You know, yeah. about what works and what doesn't. Chase, did I just – are you – I think I just found your page. Uh, do you have brown hair? You're, you're, uh, you brown hair, you're wearing a blue dress. Is this you? No, I don't think so. Richmond Hill – are you in okay. Georgia? No, that's not you. Yes. This, yeah. No. Uh, Cassie Peterson. Oh, I – Cassie this, Peterson she's works pretty. for me. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she is pretty. <laughs> she works for me, but that's not me. Got it. Actually, my personal Facebook has myself and my um, three daughters on the cover. I want to find And then it. let's see what my – what my page looks like. I think the page has my team. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. Huh, I'll find it. Okay. Um, right. Well, look, you know, what, here's what you, we left off when I, I interrupted you. You said, hey, you know, there's, everybody is, you know, wants to sell you a subscription. Everybody, there's all this, you know, latest and greatest. Oh, here you are. You're the blonde-haired girl. Yes, I'm the blonde. <laughs> okay. You're pretty, too. Is, um, thank you so much. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, look. There's everybody wants to sell you something, right? There's all these legion, you know, buy our leads or buy our legion. You know, how does somebody go through and, and figure out, especially if they're new and they, you know, they're, they're, you know, you, you don't have a, a ton of money when you're starting out, but you have a lot of, you know, you want to make, you want to win. You know, what are some of the things that you could, what mistakes did you make? Let me, uh, let me ask it that way in terms of buying oh, something and wasting yeah. time on not the right thing. Yeah. You don't have that much time. Um, <laughs> I have tried a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm hopefully I'm, I've discerned what works and what doesn't work, and I have totally learned. The biggest lesson I've probably learned is that I am not going to make the decision on the first phone call. Mm. And I ask for references. If somebody says this is the latest, greatest, you know, popsicle stand, you'll ever, you know, blah blah blah, I'm like, okay, well, who else is using you in my market? Right. Or who, what other realtor, what other REMAX agent can you give me in any part of the United States that I can call? And if they can give me three or four numbers and I call those people and they say, yeah, this works, then I'm going to consider it. If they can't, then obviously, you know, they, they have no credibility with me at that point. I need references. I need to call some people and find out if it's going to work or not, especially if it's a significant amount of money, which in real estate, it seems like everything's a significant amount of real money. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look, we've had a, um, we've had, a, uh, you know, one thing I'm trying to do is I'm starting to bring on vendors to to, to kind of solve this exact same thing, right? You know, is it worthwhile? And you know, me just dig in and like, and, and I destroy some of these people, you know, or I try to destroy <laughs> them, you know, you know, because I want my audience to know. And so, like, you know, we've had Greer Allen on the show from Boomtown. Now, Boomtown, I, I was surprised, like, hey, Greer, how much does it cost? He's like, it's eighteen hundred bucks a month. I'm like, that is pricey, man. Um, um, you know, but then you have stuff like Land Voice Data, which uh, do you know Land Voice? I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know Boomtown too. Really? Do you use Do you use either one of those? I, I do use Boomtown. Mm-hmm. You do? How, yes. how? Tell me. Well, I mean, let's. I mean, um, is that something that? At what point should somebody invest that eighteen hundred, fifteen or eighteen hundred bucks a month, and and you know, dig in? I, that's not for new agents. One hundred percent. It it will be overwhelming. And you have to have a system and people in place to man it. You can buy whatever you want to buy. If you don't have the system in place to manage it and the people to man it, it will never work. So Boomtown can sometimes send you 20 leads a day. So you better have somebody who can call because they're, they're not just on Boomtown. They're on 20 other sites. Right. So, Typically, it's whoever calls them in the first ten minutes. You know, so if you're not gonna if you're not gonna be there to call them, or you don't have somebody to call there, my team takes we take turns. Um, it's a round robin the way that it kind of gets everybody gets one out of four leads. But um, on the weekend when they're on call, they take turns on that because that 
if I'm going to spend the money, if I'm going to spend $1,800 a month, which is not the bottom line price, by the way, if you're going to spend $1,800 or more a month, then you definitely better know that somebody is, is calling those people that you're paying to get in front of. Right. I totally agree. Um, so, look, you've seen a lot of people come in in this. In you know, real estate's a funny thing. And here's here's you know, I see very smart people who can't make it. I see mm -hmm. people that are not that smart do extremely. You know, put sixty million dollars on the board. I see people with right. you know big flashy really extroverted personalities not make it and other super vanilla people that like I, some of these people I bring on the show I'm like I don't know how you are successful you know but they are so you know you've seen all these these, these people and personalities what do you think is there, you know is there one hurdle that that you know most are real estate entrepreneurs have to jump in order to become successful I think that I think what makes you successful is your passion. Mm. I love real estate. I eat, sleep, and breathe real estate. I have people call me sometimes and say, "Hey, are you, um, you know, Taylor Cowart's mom?" Yes, I am, because my kids are part of the whole process. They understand that if mom sells a house, we have a closing, we can go shopping. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's it's it. I love it. I, I my husband who actually works at Gulfstream, um, goes to work every day with Teresa Carrot signs on the side of his truck. I mean, it's little grassroots things that you do all the time that really make you successful. Yeah. And the only other thing that I think that, the only other hurdle that a new agent has to overcome, I think, is just time. Right. It's just really time. You have to do this for a while. This is not, you come into it and six months later, you're making, you know, a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 a year. That's not going to happen. You're going to spend a whole lot of money. The first year that I was in real estate, I think every credit card I had was maxed out to the to the hilt. Um, you're going to you're going to spend a lot more money before you make money. You just are. Yeah. So, because look, because here's what people get wrong uh, uh, about real estate, right? You are not. It's not. You don't get licensed, and all of a sudden, you know, you're just going to sell houses you are starting a company you are starting a business and you need to treat it like that and, and people people think that they just got themselves a job and they come in and they treat it like right. a job instead of saying okay hold on i need to have a plan i need to have a budget and then i need to execute right so That's exactly right. Uh, so in terms of so all your credit cards were maxed out um i'm I, i'm sure that you didn't envision that but you know what kind of a budget if, if pe people are out there you know because again we have you know, we have big brokers that listen to this this show, and we have you know people that are just getting their license right now. What kind of a budget would you you know should people? What kind of a runway, right? Should they have three months of living, six months of living? Um, I mean, it, the more you could have in your savings account, obviously, the better. I had um, I had a little bit unique situation because I had also bought a tannin salon about the same time oh. that the company was closing down, so I had cash flow. <laughs> had some cash flow. And that's the part that I think is really difficult for people. If you're a brand new agent, I think probably the best thing that you can do is find another really successful agent. And and I did do this. I walked around this office and I said, I will take any lead you give me and I will give you 50% of the money I make. Oh, that's great. I just got to get started. Yeah. I just got to get started. I will, and the top producers in this office were like, yeah, here you go. You know, I mean, because the going rate's, what, 25? And I was like, 50%, I'll give you half of everything because I have nothing, and half of nothing is still nothing. That's right. So and I'm that's sure how I got started. I, and then I grabbed a, one of the guys in the office. I actually probably aggravated his wife more than I aggravated him. But I um, pretty much just pushed him and pushed him until he um, mentored me. I mean, I just bugged the crap out of him all the time. You know, how does this work? Because, like you said, what they don't tell you is um, they should teach a class that says, I have my license, now what? Right. Because nobody knows what to do once they have their license. Okay, I'm with a company. I've got my license. I've got my cute little office. I've got my stapler, my computer. Okay, why is my phone not ringing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's so I, I don't think people get it. Yeah. So, uh, well, I, yeah, I think most people don't get it. I, you know, and here's the other amazing thing, right? Uh, NAR just put out this, this, you know, some stats and, you know, only 4% of, of agents, of licensed agents make more than $200,000 a year. 
You know, and people think, mm-hmm. you know, people think that, you know, they're going to come in and, you know, I'm going to show beautiful houses and, and you know, I'm just going to cut deals left and right. Yeah. And I'm going to be a rainmaker. <clears throat> um, so, look, if you were going to answer that question, I have my license. Now what? You, I mean, what? I mean, I mean, give us like the first, you know, three or four things right now. What? Well, the first thing I think you need to do is find somebody who will help you. You need to find a mentor in, that off- in your office that will help you. Even if you have to give them 50% of everything you make for the first year, you need somebody to mentor you and and walk you through it um, because your first deal may be a nightmare deal. You don't know. I mean, there are there are situations where, um, I mean, my first deal, I actually sold my listing at an open house. That never happens. But I was too stupid to know that never happened. Right, right. And I made it happen. But... Um, you just, you just never know what is coming down the pike, and you need somebody that you can bounce those questions off of, and it can't always be your broker because your broker is a lot of times too busy to deal with the little, what I call, there are no stupid questions, but I probably asked a whole lot of stupid questions in the beginning. I'm sure I did. So um, just because I was unsure and I wanted to do it right, and I think most agents are, we get out of school and we're scared to death because there's so much legal ramifications for everything that we do so we're you know trying to make sure every t is crossed every i is dotted so i think you need to find somebody that will mentor you in some way shape or form and there's lots of agents that will there are some agents who won't but there's for everyone that won't there's two that will so just find somebody who will um you know help you out especially a busy agent if you can find a really busy agent that doesn't have time to deal with all their i know that um I probably got the crumbs that, that that agent had to deal with, probably the people that he thought never would buy a house. But I don't care. Some of them did. You know, it didn't matter to me. I would take anybody. I had nobody, so I would take anybody. I sat in open houses. You know, I take, took my iPad or my laptop, whatever, and I watched movies or whatever I had to do, worked on my business plan. I just... I, you have to be out there. You're not going to make right. a dime sitting in your house. Right. Yeah, You're for sure. You're not going to make any money sitting home. So how does – okay. So so in terms of finding a mentor, um, uh, what – you know, how, look, this – I. I was not f- so sure about this call with you at first. I wasn't sure if it was going to be valuable, uh, but it is turning out to be super valuable. Um, how – does someone find a mentor and what does that look like? What can I expect? Right. Should it, is, is it, should I expect an hour a week of, of, you know, cause you know, one-on-one or what unpack that a bit, if you can. You should expect to do whatever that person wants you to do or fit into their schedule. Because I know that I was up here sometimes at eight o'clock at night, sitting on the floor with my notebook, scribbling as fast as he talked. Um, I was up here sometimes on Saturday morning because that's when he had his time available. Whenever they were available, I made myself available. Um, and and really and truly, he just talked to me. And he also, whenever I did have a client, I would come back in and say, okay, here's what we did. These are the houses that we saw. This is what they're saying to me. What does that mean? <laughs> right. Like, what should I say? Because there's usually, this, you know, there's usually a comeback for everything. You don't always know what people really mean, you know. Right. Um, so you just have to I, – I heard this just the other day, and I know that it's something I've heard all my life because I'm a talker. But, um, you know, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah. So I had to consciously not try to inject. I listened to him. I was a, a sponge. And I just – and then I went out and tried it. And some of the things that I thought, oh, I'm not sure if that will work with my personality, it, you just put your own spin on it, and yes, it works. As long as you're genuine and you have the right heart. Right, right. Passion and genuineness and authenticity I and mean, all yeah. you're saying, all sorts of good stuff. So – and by the way, just, just if nobody's ever heard that, two ears and one mouth, what does that mean? It just means that God gave you – Twice as many ears because you should listen more than you talk. Right. You should listen twice you should as much as you talk. always yeah. listen more than you talk. And, and a lot of times, I know myself personally, I can think of one situation the first year that I, we went into a house and it had the most god-awful, ugly, green carpet I've ever seen in my life. And it was right there for me to say, oh, my Lord, this 
carpet is horrible. And the next words out of the wife's mouth was, I love the carpet. Amazing. And I was like, oh, Lord, thank you for keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> Amazing. You know, it's so funny. It's so funny. Even with, even I'll tell you, man, even with like this show, I will do one and I'll go, that was not very good. And then I'll release it. I'll hold it, hold it, hold it. And I'll go, man, I'll just release that episode. And I get, I, I get, you know, Twitter blows up and my email blows up and they're like, that's so great. So it's, it's amazing, right? I mean, you're not everybody else. So I'm, I'm learning that uh, as well. Um, so going back to finding a mentor. So I can, I'm a new agent or whatever. I can either go join a Remax office and, you know, and, and find somebody in there or, I can find a Teresa Coward and join your team. Like, right. what, what's the pros and cons to both of those? Well, the cons is you're going to share your money. You're going to share your money with me forever, and that, or well, until you decide to leave the team. But um, I mean, I think there are more pros than cons, obviously, and I think that's the reason there are so many more teams these days than there have been in the past. I have um, two young ladies on my team that um, are relatively young, um, and when I interview people, I don't really care if you've sold real estate for 10 years or 10 days, because it, to me, it really matters where your heart is and how badly you want to succeed. Those are the two most important things to me, and and I have a very seasoned, a couple of very seasoned agents on my team, and then I have those two ladies, and they work their butt off and they're just as successful. They may not sell quite as many houses, but they're, for the time that they've had in the business, I consider them extremely successful because I know where they're going to be. And if at the end of the day, and, and you know, this happened in my HR world too, if somebody works for me for two years and they sell 60 houses a year for those two years, how is that a bad thing? If if they year three they decide to go out on their own, right? I mean I have no problem with that. Yeah. I want these people to be successful. Um, when they come in, they don't have as much overhead. The good thing about being part of a team is you are fed leads. Right. You have instant clients day one, and you don't have the overhead because I have the team leader absorbs that. Um, I, I, I handle all the advertising. Of course, everything says Teresa Coward team on it, right. but I handle all the advertising. I buy the signs. I buy their business cards. I mean, I take care of them. The only thing that they really have to pay is whatever fees the brokers charges. Um, and, and there have been times when I've taken care of that too, you know, just because I saw that in them, you know, for a limited time. Yeah. But, you know, I saw that in them that I've, I just felt like they were going to be a great agent and, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to live forever. So, <laughs> you know, I'd like to have some people that are really great out there. Yeah. Um, yeah one day I'd like to retire. I, 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 it seems to me that, that joining a team is, is way better than going out on your own because number one, I, you, right. The overhead is one thing. And that's an important thing depending on, on again, your cash situation. But number two, I can leverage your talent Right. Uh, I'm going to have more one on one with somebody like you than 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 mm -hmm. trying to, you know, get that info from my broker. Right. Sort of a bent, right. built in mentor is what I'm trying to get. at. And then mm -hmm. number three, you you are paying that eighteen hundred bucks for Boomtown and you're right. and you're getting those leads. So I think that's, you know, you know, and what is a lead worth? You know, I mean, um, you know, you know what it right. costs you. So. So anyhow. OK. Um, so what, I, what th th that's all golden stuff. What else should, you know, I just got my license. Now what? So I'm going to go find a mentor. I ha now, you know, from you, Teresa, you know, they've got, learned the pros and cons of a, joining a, an office or a team. W what, what else should they start thinking about? Well, I, I caution everybody in my office, and this may or may not be something that y'all talk about on the show, but um, you better make sure that you're putting some money back for savings, number one, but for Uncle Sam, number two. Yes. Like, that's extremely important, and a lot of people lose sight of that because you are going to pay taxes, yep. and you are an independent contractor, so you absolutely have to make sure that you have money saved for that. And I think a lot of people lose sight of that, especially in the, in the beginning when you're, you know, maxing out your cards and you're just trying to survive. Yeah, or you know, or they you know they they go and they they do some deals, sell a big house or whatever, and they they're like, oh man, I'm gonna go buy a new car, and I and and, right. they, and you can make so many justifications. Okay, listen, if I, I drive a Mercedes, um, I'm gonna look more successful, and therefore I'm gonna close more deals. 
And then at the end of the year, they're like, Ugh. you know, yeah, I, 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 Uncle I Sam, forty thousand dollars. Where's that coming from? That's right. Right. So what is that's the, absolutely right. And I, you know, I just you don't want that to be an albatross around your neck. Yeah. Like, just go ahead and start saving. I and mean, if you don't pay it quarterly, just go ahead and put it in your account and forget about it, which is kind of what I do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and look, and the other thing, the other thing that that you know, for me, right? I mean, I, I know you didn't ask me this question, but I was like, you know, you know, it's it's having that budget, right? You should have three bank accounts. You should have, you know, you should have your your living expenses bank account. Mm-hmm. You should have your marketing expenses bank account. Um, and then there's another one that I that I always talk about that I can't forget. But you know, you need to separate that. If you have just all one bank account with all your money, your tax mm-hmm. money for taxes, money for market, you never know where any, you know, that's. Right. A recipe for disaster. Yeah, I don't do that. You're right. That's exactly what I do. That's a very good point. I have multiple checking accounts and a couple of savings accounts for that reason. That I have one savings account that is, or money market, whatever it is, that is just for taxes. And I just don't touch it. If it goes in there, it's there till the end of the year. And if there's money left over, that's awesome because that'll start next year. But I'm not touching that. Right. Um, well, well, plus for you, I mean, you have so much cash that you, you, you have to spread it around between banks. Oh, I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Um, so, okay, that's that's good stuff. I mean, um, uh, look, this business. I mean, I know you have a passion for it. You know, you, 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 we you talked about your your difficult first year, but you know, real estate is this business of no's. It's a business of rejection. You go out every day and you try to make something happen, and uh, you put yourself out there, and people, you know, tell you no. They they say no. I don't want what you have i'm not interested in you <laughs> was there ever a time where where you know and again we all have those days or weeks where you're like man i just can't get up and do it again today was there ever a time that you was just you felt that and, the, and you wanted to quit and how did you push nope. through that never i never have i've never wanted to quit since i got in it i love it i would i, I mean there are days when i'm very frustrated and i, I just want to you know put my head under the sink or something, but there's never been a day when I really thought, I hate this. There's never been a day like that. I have some really challenging today days. Um, today has kind of been one of them, but oh, no. I still love it. I still, it's a feel good job. It is a feel good job. I know there's a lot of no's. I know people are ugly to us sometimes or condescending or, you know, whatever, downright rude. Yeah. But there's a there's a special kind of joy that comes from the, when you get to the end and you have made a family or a young soldier or a college graduate feel good about themselves. They've got a new home. They're happy. You know, there's just something about that feeling that makes it all worthwhile. It just it, – all those other people, they cannot t- – I say this all the time. You are not stealing my joy. That guy is not stealing my joy. I am going to be happy today. This is going to be a good day. And I don't care what they do. Those are just negative people. Get away from me. Yeah, that's poisonous. Good for you, yeah, man. Exactly. I, look, I bet you, I bet working on your team is fun. I bet, it, you know, I bet, you know, if you feel that way, I mean, look, corporate culture starts at the top. And, and mm-hmm. it, you know, if you build your team with this kind of love and passion that, that you're exuding over the airwaves right now, you know, I bet that it just feels like such a great environment to, 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 to wake up and go and, and do work in. I hope so. That's, I mean, it, it's, it's not my job. It's my life. Yeah. So this is what we do, and and it seeps over into every other part of my life. I mean, you can't, you know, a lot, my husband, I'll use him as an example, you know, he goes to work Monday through Friday, and with few exceptions, you know, he doesn't think about his job very much on the weekends right. or at night, you know, and I'm the girl that's, like, checking her phone at 3 a.m. because it beeped, you know, and somebody's right. texting me or whatever because, you know, the military, they have different time zones a lot. So, um it, you just have to want to do this. This is not something that can just be a, a job. So, so okay, and 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 uh, let's just go down that a little bit. So, so real estate, your your work, right, is who you are, and it seeps into every other part of your life. Which you know, that's, that's right. it, every entrepreneur, whatever you know. That's if you are a real entrepreneur and you're building a company, it always works like that, right? You're never working and you're never not working. <clears throat> but right. let, let's talk about how you stay. How do you stay productive and focused on a day to day basis with all the stuff that you have going on? You have a team, right? You're selling houses. You're a mom. You're a wife. 
it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. Sure. And you can only do one thing at a time. And I just find that I have to have um, I have to have a list and I have to prioritize. And sometimes I have to let little stuff go. And, um, you know, over the years, I have probably sacrificed a little bit too much. And, and you have to have your family buy-in. I can't imagine doing this if my family didn't understand how important it was to me and didn't understand why I do it. Like, it. I think first people have to understand why your life is like this um, and why it's important to you. And, and, you know, I'm fortunate my family does. And I've known lots of women and men who didn't have that support system at home and they weren't able to do this very long or very well. Right, right. Uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, there's uh, uh, there's something I was going to start ask you about just the the husband dynamic, but I, I, I won't. Um, just uh, um, well, and look, it's this. Here's I'll ask it. So you know, is there a problem? You know, I don't know how much money your husband makes, but but you know, when I talk with, with successful women like you, you know, a lot of times you make more money than your husband does. You know, and I and I don't. You know, I wonder if that's an issue sometimes for you know, in, in, in relationships, in marriages? You know, I, um, this is not my first marriage okay. and, um, we have never put our money together. Like my grandmother told me that a long time ago, which, you know, she's way smarter every year that goes by. But, um, she told me a long time ago that if you never merged your money with your husband, you'd be a lot happier. And it's not about, I've got more money than you, or you've got more money than me. We split everything. Number one. Hmm. So at, at the end of the month when the mortgage is due, I write a check for half, he writes a check for half. Interesting. So I'm never doing more than him. Now, if I want to do something or buy something or pay for something that, you know, maybe he um, couldn't afford to do or what, I just do it. Right. And, and he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't seem to mind. I mean, my husband has a great job and makes great money. And he, he's a great person. And I... It doesn't matter that if I make more money than he does and or if, you know, the circumstances change and he makes more money than we do because we're a team and we're going to do it together. Yeah. And if he needs money, I'm going to give it to him. Or if I need to pay for that, then I'm going to pay for it. And we don't keep tabs. Right. But at the same time, you know, if I – he doesn't have a clue how much I spend on marketing or how much I – spend on this or and if he did he would stroke out like he would just die so he he doesn't and he doesn't understand i mean he's got more of an engineering mind so he doesn't understand sales anyway you know or, yeah. or why you know sometimes i do the things that i do but he loves me so he you know we overcome that <laughs> well can you tell us real quick and, and we're gonna be wrapping up here in in, in a few mm -hmm. let me see what time was so we're 46 minutes in so i appreciate you hanging with me we're gonna we're just a few more questions and we're gonna sign off can you tell us okay. one thing i know we talked about boontown but you know what's one thing that's working for you in your business right now and if it's boontown that's it but that's fine but yeah. Well, you mean as far as um, it's, generating it, leads? Anything. Or... Just, just something where you just go, you know what? That thing is, I'm, I'm glad we developed the, or did this or, you know, that thing is working and it's, and it's kicking off positive I result. Did, yeah. I think the, the, the most important part of the whole wheel, because of course there's a thousand cogs to it, is just the, the, um, the management system, the, you know, the, the, the fact that we have all of our customers in a system and that we can drip email them and that we can send out flashes and that we can monitor what they're doing and and stay focused on them because it's all about follow-up and, and, and the feedback that you're getting from them. Am I, am I doing this right? You know, and um, are, you, are you getting what you need from me? You know, just total right. customer service. That's the key, customer service. That's the one thing that works for us. There got you it. go. I, I got to it. it. It took me a little bit. That's okay. No, no. I love it. I love it. And I just talked with another guy who we talked about. He's got all these email drip campaigns, right? Pre-appointment uh, drips. And I was like, whoa. And I saw, I looked at all these and I was like, that is so, it's amazing. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Anyhow. Okay. I do have to wrap up because I have another call in less than 10 minutes. Here's my last okay. question. Um, okay. Uh, I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? 
what book should I go buy? Um, I just, I have not read this, but I've heard five or six people so far told me they have read it. It's a book called The Carpenter. And um, I, I really can't say how awesome it is, only that that's the one I'm, that's my next book I'm going to buy. Okay, that's good. Uh, I've got a ton of books, but that's the next one I'm going to buy. i got to find out who wrote that. Well, look, I will find out. For everybody out in the audience, if you want a free copy of The Carpenter, and I don't know who, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, use our link. Um, yeah, it, you can get it on Amazon, and I'm trying to, I was going to dig through and find out who wrote it, but I can't remember. Uh, but anyway. Right uh, hold on. Um, Rack, he's got a weird name. Rack, uh, oh, John Gordon. The Carpenter yes, by John Gordon. Yeah, so if you want to copy this, use our link, audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. Get a free copy. Hey, Teresa, thanks for coming on the show. Let, let my audience know where they can reach out to you and say thank you because I, I, I know people are, are like, I've fallen in love with you on this call, and I'm sure everybody, there's going to be tons of people just going, I, that girl is so cool. Aw, thank you. Well, my email is Teresa at TeresaCowart.com. Freakoutteam.com. I'm sorry, I can't tell you my email right. Um, and then we have a couple different websites. Um, uh, my main website is um, TeresaCowartteam.com. Got it. Okay, cool. Yep. Hey, okay. Teresa, thanks again. I appreciate you you taking time out of a, a day that was that was you know a tough day for you. Yeah. Thank you so much for calling. I appreciate you it. Got it. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Let's go. Concentrated power.